Hello guys and welcome to my candle tips and tricks video where I'm going to share with you how to get the best use out of your candles and to do it safely. What a wonderful So in today's video, I'm going to break it up into a few parts. First, I'm going to go into my tips and then I'm going to give you guys some ideas on any sort of tools that you're going to need for candle burning and a little overview of the terms. If you're new to the candle community, there is a lot of like terms that they use. So I'll kind of give you a little breakdown of those, but let's get started. So first I'm going to give you guys my general rule for candle burning. And this is the reason why I, as a child, was not allowed to burn candles in my house because I just couldn't be responsible enough for it. So just a tip and please keep this in mind to only burn candles when you are home and when you can pay attention to them and make sure that they are away from pets and children because we don't want anyone getting burned or causing fires or things like that. So please just make sure that you're safe because again, this is an open flame. So there are a lot of cautions that can go along with this. So just be mindful and vigilant about your candle usage. But for me personally, I do have a dog and he is about the size of a lab. So I am totally fine to burn candles around him even on like lower um, tables. He doesn't show any interest in them whatsoever. But when we're dog sitting, his sister from the same litter has a very long tail and her tail can sometimes hit the candles. So whenever she's over, I have to make sure to put the candles on a higher um, surface. So just be mindful of things like that. Also like with cats, I'm not sure, I've never owned a cat before, but I'm sure they get up on counters and things like that. So just be sure to put it on maybe a shelf or something that they can't get to, um, as well as children get it to a point that's high enough to where they can't touch it and play with it because you don't want them to get burned. So just a tip, please, please, please be mindful about where your candles are and burn them safely. Okay, now that that's out the way, I'm gonna give you my actual tips for candle burning. That's really gonna help with the longevity of your candles. So the first tip that I have is to let the wax pull out fully before you extinguish it. So what I mean pull out is you're gonna notice that as your flame goes, when you first light up the candle, there's this little pool that forms around the wax and that's just from the heat melting the wax. So on a single wick candle, for instance, it takes about an hour for the wax to fully reach all sides of the candle jar. And you're gonna wanna let it reach at least the edges before you extinguish it to prevent what's called tunneling, which means that this wax deposit is left on the edges of your candle and the flame keeps going down and down and down, but it doesn't burn the wax on the sides. So that's what a tunneling candle can do and you don't want that to happen so make sure that your wax reaches all edges of the jar before it goes all the way down so about one hour or maybe two for a single wick and for a three wick it's going to be about at least an hour and a half if not two or three hours and for how long to burn your candles for a three wick or bigger i'm gonna say at least an hour for every wick and that's going to be three hours for a three wick four hours for a four wick and so on and so forth um, at least until it reaches the edges. But for me, I find a great time um, period for my three wicks is around two to four hours. That's really however long I'll keep them on. Because if you burn it longer than four hours, it's gonna affect the scent of your candle because it's gonna be going for too long. The wicks are gonna be burning for too long and it's actually going to get your candle sooty, which is another word that we're gonna define today, a sooty candle just means that the wick, which is this little thing here made out of fibers, once it burns, it does get black, right? And you'll see sometimes when you blow out a candle, there's black smoke. Black smoke is the soot and it will collect on the sides of your jar and that's totally fine. Um, but sometimes it will actually seep into the wax itself. So see how this candle is white right now? If it were to get sooty, it would get a little darker, including some black, and it would get kind of a gray, murky color. And what soot does is it makes your candle smell like fire or like burning embers of a fire. And you don't want that smell, obviously, especially with a candle as soft as pistachio and toasted vanilla. I don't want my vanilla to be smoky smelling. Um, that's kind of the last thing that I want. So you really want to limit it to about four hours on those three wicks um, in order for it to burn down fully. So I'll show you, this is champagne toast. I just finished this one actually, and it burned all the way down to the bottom. 
and you're gonna know when to finish a candle or to be done with it whenever you see these little wick clips. So the wick that's in here is actually held down by this metal clip is what it's called, and it's glued to the bottom of the jar. And sometimes if you burn it too long, the glue that's attaching the clip is gonna come up from the bottom of the jar and kind of just move around and you really don't want that to happen but if it does happen you can no longer burn the candle because the wick could be too close to the edge of the jar and if the wick is very close to the edge of the jar that heat from the flame will actually break the glass and it could shatter so you just want to be very careful if you do notice that your wicks kind of migrate out of this center area and they migrate towards the edges of the glass, you can no longer burn it. Um, please be very careful about that because if that does happen, it can explode across the room and hot wax goes everywhere and it's just a mess and it's also a hazard. So just be very careful about that if your wicks do migrate. Now, another thing I want to talk about is how to extinguish the flame. So yes, you finished burning your candle and you want to blow it out or whatever. So yes, you could blow it out. That's honestly not my preferred method because sometimes it's hard to blow out. The smoke gets everywhere and I end up blowing hot wax somewhere. So I actually prefer to just stick the candle on top of it very loosely and let it extinguish itself because if there's no more oxygen going to the flames, it's going to just go ahead and putter out but just be mindful to put on the lid very lightly and not suction cup it to there because it could actually deprive the candle of oxygen and then your lid will get stuck. I've had that happen before. So just be careful to only stick it on there very lightly and not push down and the um, wick will just extinguish itself. So you could also get what's called little wick dip dippers. I don't have those because I don't really prefer to do that kind of candle method. I feel like it's a little unnecessary, but if you want to, you can get a little wick dipper. It's kind of like a tweezer and you just stick the wick into the wax to extinguish itself, basically covering it in the wax so that it can no longer be flaming. And they also have what's called a snuffer. I've actually only ever seen candle snuffers used like in church services, honestly. Um, but I feel like the candle snuffer would probably just be the same thing as blowing it out and kind of smoke gets everywhere. So I don't really prefer that. I don't own a candle snuffer, so I don't really recommend that, but that's another method you could do. And the last thing that I have for a tip is where you're going to burn your candle does matter. So on things like wood furniture, I would not just simply put the candle on the furniture and burn it because once it does get down pretty low, it gets very, very hot on the bottom of this candle and it can actually warp your furniture if it's wood or if it's painted. Um, it can warp the paint, it can warp the wood. I've had it happen before, so I really don't recommend it. So in that case, you're gonna wanna get yourself some sort of candle holder. I have mine that I got from Bath & Body Works, but they sell them at like Target, Walmart, wherever. But I definitely recommend getting a candle holder if you have a wood surface because I wouldn't want to burn it directly on wood. But if you do have like a kitchen counter made out of granite, totally fine to burn it right on the granite. And some people like to take the lid and just sit it on the lid and put that on their wood furniture. But as you guys know, I like to extinguish my candle with the lid, so I don't like to do that. But that is an option to do that if you don't own a candle holder. So that's it for my tips. Now I do have a few little accessories that I'm going to go through really quickly for you guys. Number one is a lighter. So I currently just use a regular Bic lighter and this is actually for like lighting charcoal to light a grill, but I like that this has a long tip so I don't actually have to touch the flame because I find if you use those little 99 cent lighters, you're really, really close to the flame and it can burn you. So this is a nice length. It's about, you know, four or five inches away from your hand. So you're not burning yourself. So I definitely recommend getting yourself one of these. They also make electric ones. I've had electric lighters in the past. One, I don't like the sound that they make. They make a very high squeaking sound. And two, mine didn't really last long. It lasted like three months. And even with recharging it, it just wouldn't light anymore. So I find it's kind of a waste of money when this could last me the same amount of time. And number two, what I recommend is what's called a wick trimmer. Now you're definitely going to want to trim your wicks. And that's another big tip that I have is to trim your wicks every time you burn it, or at least every time you see what's called a mushroom top. So wick trimmers, you can get these off of Amazon. They're about like six bucks on Amazon. You can also find them in Target and Walmart and any kind of random any um, like homeware store, they usually have these wick trimmers probably in like home goods and stuff too. 
but this is really good because your wick can grow over and it can actually mushroom out, which I'll show you a close up of what a mushroom top looks like. And you're gonna wanna trim that because if you do light a mushroom top, it actually sparks and um, the wick will fly off and you don't want that to happen and accidentally hit you or burn somebody. It also kind of just makes a mess with the, um, the burnt part of the wick is black and it'll get everywhere if you try to wipe it. So just a word of the wise, please trim your wicks. It also helps with the longevity and helps them not to smell sooty. So trim your wicks pretty much every time you can. And also if you have a brand new candle, you're definitely gonna wanna trim the wicks before you use them because they leave them pretty long. This one is about one and a quarter inch long and you really only want it at most like a half an inch long. So you're definitely gonna wanna cut those before you use them for the first time. The next candle accessory we're gonna talk about is a candle crock. So I have this from Amazon and a candle crock is basically something that you can put your candle into and instead of lighting up the candle, you'll burn the wax by heating it up from the bottom. So you'll see right here, there's a little caution sign because this bottom part is the hot plate. It's basically a hot plate. Um, and this is a ceramic instrument to hold your candle in. So I could do a single wick in here if I wanted, it definitely fits. And I could also do a three wick in here if I wanted to as well. And Crocs for me, honestly, I haven't used it since I moved into an apartment, but in a home, it works really well to make your candle just super strong smelling. Um, but I haven't found that I needed it in my um, apartment just because it's so much smaller, but it really helps with that. It also helps with your candle if it's a very weak thrower, which another word that we're gonna learn today is called throw. And that's what candle people use to describe the um, strength of a candle. So if it smells really, really strong or it smells really, really light. So usually we'll talk about strength of throw and that's low, medium, or high strength. So a really strong candle, for example, is like mahogany teak wood from Bath & Body Works. That one smells super strong. It'll fill up multiple rooms in a house it is a super high thrower. Um, another one that would be like a lower strength of throw would be any sort of vanilla candle is usually very light and doesn't smell up anything more than like one room. So if you were to use a candle crock with a vanilla candle, it would kind of expand th the throw and make it a stronger throwing candle. So that's why you would use a crock Another function of a crock is, like we said earlier, if your candle ever gets too hot and that glue on the wick clip melts and your little wick moves around and it's super close to the edge of the glass and you don't want the glass to pop and shatter everywhere, you can also put it in a candle crock and you can use up the candle that way. So you'll know when a candle is finished in the crock once it no longer smells and you'll just take it out and discard it. Um, but once you do put a candle in the crock, you cannot light it ever again. So just keep that in mind. You cannot light a candle once you put it in the crock because since we are heating up the candle from the bottom, it's gonna loosen that glue and the wick's gonna move around. So you really can only use these um, as a last resort if either your wicks are already moved or your candle is super, super low in strength and you want it to be very high. So that's the reason why you would use a crock. I haven't needed it, like I said, in an apartment just because my candles don't need to be super strong in here, but if I did have a big like open concept house, I would probably use my crock more often. And the last terms that I'll go through is what we call a one wick versus like a three wick. And I'm just talking Bath and Body Works here, but there's other candles that are gonna be four or five, six wicks. But that just means how many of these little things in the middle there are to light up. So a single wick means that there is only one that we can light and it's probably gonna be a lighter throw. This one's great for like a bathroom or a smaller bedroom. Whereas these three wicks will be great for a living room, a kitchen, a larger bedroom or a regular bedroom. These are really good for kind of bigger areas. And then I have seen like Target has a lot of giant six wick candles or like home stores will have some big six wick candles. And those are gonna be for bigger rooms like living rooms or open concept dining rooms and kitchens. So that's what we talk about when we talk about the one wick, three wick, six wick. It just means how many 
of them there are and how big the candle is. Okay, so that's everything for my candle tips and tricks video. I hope that was useful for you guys. I hope you can come back to this too if you need like a refresher on things or if you're having problems. But yeah, that is everything that I have to share with you guys today. Let me know down below if you have any tips that I have not mentioned so you can share them with our audience and they can hear what you guys have to say too. So that's everything for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below and I will see you all in my next video. Bye.